Hello everybody, starting from this video, we're going to uh, we'll, we'll learn chapter 2 part B and I want to do a very quick review about what we learned in the previous par, uh, part A. So in part A, we are focusing on uh, learning how to use the tabular and the graphical method to summarize either categorical data or quantitative data. So in the part A, I emphasize that when you try to use the visual summarization for your data, you have to first step to identify what kind of data you're analyzing. So if you're looking at the categorical data, so you have to understand you can use a frequency, relative frequency, percent frequency, and uh, bar chart and pie chart to analyze it. However, if you're dealing with the quantitative data, such as age, temperature, and uh, you can use uh, frequency, relative frequency, percent frequency, cumulative frequency, cumulative relative frequency, cumulative percent frequency distribution, and histogram to summarize it. And uh, we talk about uh, the differences of creating frequency distribution for categorical data and quantitative data. And I mentioned that if you're dealing with the categorical data, that's pretty straightforward because of that already you already given classes or categories. However, if you're dealing with the quantitative data, you have to add one more step. That is to define your classes. So that is basically what we learned in the part A. So as we move to part B, what we're going to learn will be focusing on the relationships. So if you think about in the business world, so most of the questions actually relate to the relationships. So for instance, increasing the variety of the, um, the, the product offered in the grocery store, will that help to improve in the, uh, increasing the revenue? So you'll basically look at the relationship between the variety of the product and the revenue. And so there is many other things talking about your daily life. So you, you want to understand uh, the relationship between the hour you put in a class and the, 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 uh, the, the grade you will receive. So you're looking at a relationship between the effort you put in and the outcome you will get from your effort. So in the, no matter it's in the uh, business world or non-business world, it's very, very important that you can use certain methods to figure out the relationship. So in the part B, we're going to look at the two different methods you can use uh, to help you to understand the relationship between two variables. So the first method we'll look at is you call a tabular method. So basically, we're going to create a table using a table to guide us to find relationship. And another one is we are generating a diagram. It's a chart. And you are based on the chart, and we try to find the relationship between two variables. So uh, let's start from the first method. That is our tabular method. <clears throat> And the part B, we are uh, still focusing on the graphical uh, discrete statistics using tabular and graphical display. As I said, we focus on the relationship between two variables. So two variables. And so first, uh, <clears throat> what we're going to learn in the part B, including the following. Summarizing the data for two variables using table. Summarizing data for two variables using graphical display. And then lastly, we we'll talk about the best practice in creating effective graphical display. So let's look at how we're going to use the um, how we use the um, table to uh, uh, to represent to help us to identify the relationship between two variables. So this method is called uh, cross tabulation. Uh, so this is basically what I said about so the cross tabulation. So cross tabulation is a method for summarizing the data for two variables. And so what is a, um, a cross tabulation? So the cross tabulation, uh, when you are thinking to use the cross tabulation to summarize the relationship, uh, you just need to under you 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 should be aware that uh, it doesn't matter what kind of data you're analyzing. And so the both variable can be quantitative, both variable can be categorical, or one is quantitative, one is categorical. It doesn't matter what kind of the data you are analyzing, you always can use cross tabulation to help you to understand the relationship between two variables. So generally speaking, we're going to create this table. And on the left and the top margin label define the classes for the two variables. So in this first part of the lecture, we focus on how this table looks like, how we're reading the table, and then in the next video, you're actually going to look at how you excel to generate this cross tabulation. So uh, uh, now I want to show you the example that uh, how our cross label, uh, cross uh, cross tabulation is supposed to look like. 
So this is an example about finger lake homes. So the number of the finger lake homes sold for each style and the price for the past two years is shown below. So what I'm going to show you is a table and that table we call it cross tabulation. So this table is a cross tabulation and uh, as you see that you might feel that oh actually I've already seen it in other places. Yes, you should see that in some other places. Um, here we just give a formal definition. So this is a cross tabulation. So you can see from this cross tabulation, the number inside the table are the frequencies. And so the row, we call the, the end of the row, or the first row and the first column as the margin of my table. So the margin of my table, so you can see uh, the column is use the price range to label it. So cheaper than $250,000 or more expensive than $250,000. And each column here is labeled by the home style. We have colonial, log, split, A, and A frame. So obviously, uh, in this example, one variable is quantitative price range. That is quantitative. And so we define the classes, so two classes. And the home style on a different will be our is a different variable, so this is categorical data. So obviously we try to develop this table to understand the relationship between the price range and home style. So price range and home style. So before I ask you to interpret this out uh, the table and give you some uh, help regarding how you should interpret in the cross tabulation, I want to emphasize a few things. So how are we supposed to read in the uh, value inside table. So for instance, um, first of all, actually, I want to, uh, to you, I want you to only focus on the number inside table. So forget about the last row and the last column. The last row label as total. The last column is label as total. Just as first of all, ignore this margin, uh, last column, last row. Let's just focus on the number inside table. So what this 18 means? So what this 18 means? So the 18 means we have 18 houses, it is colonial, and the price is less than $250,000. So basically, the number inside the table, so those are the frequency that is satisfy both uh, the category, both vertical and horizontal categories. So this is 18 is the house is colonial and it has to be cheaper than $250,000. How about 16? So 16 has to satisfy both column and row, so it has to be split and more expensive, at least $250,000. So we have 16 houses satisfy this uh, criteria. So how about 12? It has to satisfy both column and the row, so that is we have 12 houses, they are A-frame, and uh, cheaper than $250,000. So we actually give a name for uh, the, uh, the, the inside. So that is uh, uh, the, the joint frequency. So the joint frequency. So now after we understand how to read the, the frequency inside the table, so now let's focus on the margin. So look at the last column, and now we're gonna move on to the last row later. So look at the last column, total 50, and the 45. So what do they mean? So 55 uh, is corresponding to this row. It's cheaper than $250,000 and so it's representing the total. So which means among all these 100 uh, houses, we totally have 55 houses cheaper than $250,000. How about 45? So that is how many houses are at least $255,000. So hopefully this actually helps you to uh, remind you of what we learned in uh, part A, our frequency distribution. So think about if in this case we only have one variable that is called the price range. Can you find its frequency distribution? Yes, the frequency distribution is here. So this is gonna be my first column of my frequency distribution. If you don't remember what is frequency distribution, please go back to chapter two, part A, to watch the frequency distribution for quantitative data again, okay? So this first column, price range, will be the first column of your frequency distribution for price range, and the last column here, that will be the frequency for the frequency distribution for the price range. So this is the frequency distribution for the price range. And um, look at the last row, 
total here. So under the last row total, we have 30, 20, 35, 15. So what do they mean? So 30 is corresponding to this column called a colonial. 20 is corresponding to this column for the log. 35 is corresponding to the column split. And the A frame is corresponding, or the 15 is corresponding to A frame. And so they are all in the row called the total. So that actually means we totally, among the sampling area, sampled houses, we have 30 of them are colonial. We totally have 20 of them are log. We have 35 of them are split. And 15 of them are A frame. And similarly, think about uh, similar as our price range. So basically, in this case, our first column is different categories for the home styles. And the last, sorry, the first row is the, the first row of the label. So that is the different classes for home style. We have four different classes. And the last row here actually will be their frequency distribution for home style. So therefore, if you have cross tabulation, you don't need to spend extra time to figure out what is the frequency distribution for each variable because it is basically will be the last column or the last row for the certain for each corresponding to each variables. So this is the second characteristic you need to recognize from the cross tabulation. So the last thing I want to point out is the uh, the right down corner. So this is the intersection between column total and the row total. So what does this number always mean is, so that is your total sample size. So in this case, without going to ask people who taking this, uh, who carry on this uh, uh, survey or collecting this data, you will be able to know what is your sample size. So your sample size is 100. So that is represented by this number on the right down corner. So this is called cross tabulation. OK, so after we understand how to read the number in the cross tabulation, and so I want to ask you, how will you interpret this uh, table? OK, I can read some students' mind, because some of you say, oh, yeah, in this area we have uh, uh, houses are, we have more houses are uh, uh, cheaper than, a little bit, slightly more houses are cheaper than $250,000. And in this area, uh, colonial and the split are very popular. OK, that's not wrong. However, it's not uh, not uh, complete. Why am I saying that? The reason is because when you talk about uh, we have slightly more houses, uh, slightly more houses are cheaper than 250,000, or we have the colonial and split are more popular, your focus is on individual variables, either price range or home style. Do you remember? I mentioned at the very beginning of this video, I said uh, what we're going to focus on in this part is the relationship, how to use the visual uh, method to show the relationship, it, uh, which means after you are using this method, your goal is try to find relationship. Therefore, your interpretation should relate to the relationship instead of only focusing on each on individual variables. So we should look at what is the relationship between the price range and the home style that you can find from this cross tabulation, which means you should focus on the value inside this box, so inside the table. Uh, you definitely can talk about the margin of the table, the value on the margin, but you should really focus on the value inside the table. So that is how you properly use this table to help you to find, uh, to uh, uh, to solve the business, getting the business insight. So I will show you a few examples in terms of how to interpret the result. So the greatest number of the home, which is 19, in the sample are split style and the price at least than $250,000. So you can see in this present, uh, in this interpretation, the first example, uh, you will notice that uh, I'm focusing on the relationship between the home uh, the home style and the price range. So I'm not isolate any uh, variable out. So I focus on the relationship. And look at the second uh, way, uh, second example. So only three home in the sample are the A frame style and the price at two hundred fifty thousand dollars or more. Again, I'm focusing on the relationship. 
So the relationship between the home style and the uh, price range. I'm not just focusing on one independent variable because if I'm only uh, interpreting one variable, why bother creating cross tabulation? I can just use my free distribution you learned from the lab uh, part A, right? So uh, keep in mind when you're developing cross tabulation, your goal is try to find relationship. So when you work on your homework on uh, uh, online platform, so if you have interpretation, make sure you understand what is your focus. And so uh, that is the cross tabulation. So the next slide, uh, basically, it just uh, repeat what I just mentioned about. Uh, you don't actually have to create your free distribution. If you already has a cross tabulation, you can very easily to identify the free distribution for each variable. And so you don't need to uh, use actual energy to develop them. So uh, next, we're going to still focus on the cross tabulation. But here, I want to introduce in the transformation of the uh, cross tabulation. So we have the two ways to transform our cross tabulation. So one is called a row percent cross tabulation. Another is called a column percent cross tabulation. <clears throat> So we're converting the entry in the table into row percentage or column percentage can provide us additional insight about relationship between the two variables. And so uh, first, I want to explain uh, how you can manually calculate this row percentage cross tabulation and how can you um, manually calculate column percent cross tabulation. When you work on the homework, if you're given data sets, and then you actually can use Excel very quickly to convert your cross tabulation to row and column percent cross tabulation. And then in our after this video, you can well, you're gonna move on to the computer skill learning, and then you will be able to learn the method how you can use Excel to generate row and column percent cross tabulation. But here I will focus on how you can manually calculate it because. No matter how smart the computer is, I hope you can understand how the computer calculated. And also, we're also going to focus on how you should interpret this uh, row and column percentage cross tabulation. And so, let's look at this uh, cross tabulation again. So, first, I will talk about if you try to develop a row percentage cross tabulation. Let me. So, if you're going to do the row percentage cross tabulation, the first thing you need to do is identify your rows. So how many rows do we have here? Except my last row, which is total, we have two rows. So the, this is my first row. And then this is my second row. OK, so we have two rows. So that's the first step you identify. Uh, we will try to create a row percent cross tabulation. So after you identify your how many rows you have and what are they, and the second step, so what is your row total? To identify your row total. So where can you find this number? Where's your row total? So the row total is corresponding to your last column called the total. So in the first row, totally we have 50 observations. In the second row, we total have 45 observations. So that's great. After you identify your row total, and then the third step, what you're going to do is to do the conversion. So you are using the frequency in each cell. So the frequency each cell divided by the its corresponding row total. So corresponding row total. And then times 100. OK, so frequency divided by the row total times 100. That is how you convert it. Let me show you how to do it. So for instance, for the first row, uh, the frequency, we have 18. So this 18 is belong to the first row. Therefore, it's going to divide by its uh, row total. So that is 55. 18 divided by 55. I don't have to calculate later around me, but later I will show you the final answer. But you definitely can calculate by yourself. You have a calculator around you. And then times 100. So that is how you convert to the row percentage. And then the next value is 6 divided by 55. Because 6 is belong to first row as well, divided by 55 times 100. 
and then you would do the same thing to 19 and a 12. So then you got to convert the first row to the row percent cross tabulation, and then you will do very similar step for the second row. Uh, however, the second row belong to the second row total, so that is 45. So therefore, 12 divided by 45 instead of 55 and times 100. And 14 divided by 45 times 100. And then the same for 16 and the 3. So that is how you convert your uh, cross tabulation to row percentage cross tabulation. And so if you don't have a question, and, uh, let's look at the answer, okay? So this is the answer. And so after I convert uh, using each frequency divided by the corresponding uh, row total, and I convert my table to the row percentage cross tabulation, row percentage cross tabulation. And so how about the column percentage cross tabulation? So I'm sure for the students who are very smart, already figure out how to do it. But I, I also I want to uh, confirm you got it right. So let's look at the table again. So in order to do the column percent cross tabulation, the first step you need to identify is how many columns you have. Uh, so your column, columns. So how many columns you have? First, second, third, and the fourth. Don't worry about the first one, the last column, because that's the total. So you totally have four column, four column, and then Similar as row percent cross tabulation, and you identify column total. So we define the column total. So for the first column, you total have 30 uh, samples. Second column, total have 20 sample size. The third column, the total have 35. The fourth column total have 15. So after you identify the to column total, and very similar step as your row percent cross tabulation, and if you are using the frequency, and then divided by the column total. So the corresponding column total, okay? Column total. Okay. So Let's do it together. So first, I want to convert my first row, first column to the column percentage cross tabulation. Go well, column percentage. What I will do is first, I you find the frequency which is 18. So 18 divided by the column total. The 18 in the first column, the total is 30. Therefore, you are using 18 divided by 30 and times 100. Similarly, 12 divided by 30 times 100. Okay, and then for the second column. So we are using the frequency 6 divided by the corresponding frequency. That will be 20 instead of 30, okay? 20 times 100 and the 14 divided by 20 times 100. And then you would use the same procedure for the third and fourth column. Make sure you divide by the corresponding sample, which is 35 and 15. And then you can very quickly convert it to the column percentage cross tabulation. So let me show you the answer. Okay, so this is the answer. So this is the column percentage cross tabulation. Column percentage cross tabulation. So some students might need to ask me why we need to develop the row percentage cross tabulation or column percentage cross tabulation. It really depends on the needs. So when should we use the row percentage cross tabulation? So when you're using row percentage cross tabulation, is given you know the p uh, your uh, given you know the uh, the, uh, the the value for your uh, the the price range. So that the variable you use to label the row 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 uh, label the rows label each rows. Given you know the value uh, of the given the you know the value of the variable that you use to label each rows, and then you're going to use the row percent cross tabulation. Why? Because for instance, let's see, uh, you are the real estate agent, and I tell you I want to spend more than three hundred thousand dollars to buy a very popular house in the Finger Lake area. So if that's the case, you should use the you will not use the cross tabulation. Instead, you're gonna use a row percent cross tabulation because this is gonna give you a better insight about what kind of house you should recommend, right? Because if I, I said I wanna buy 
a three hundred thousand dollars house, at least three hundred thousand dollars house. So then you want to say, oh, I have very high budget for the 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 house. So then I, I also I told you the preference. I want to buy a popular house that is three hundred thousand dollars. So then if you look at okay, uh, the house is at least two hundred fifty thousand dollars. 26% of them are colonial, 31% log, and uh, split 35%, A-frame is uh, 6%. So obviously you can say, oh, now I'm going to represent a uh, split because this person have a very high budget, given you know this value for the price range, and then you're going to recommend the most popular one. So that's the split, right? So given you know the value of the variable that is labeled the rows, and then you're going to use row percent cross tabulation to assist you to make it business decision. So similarly for the column percent cross tabulation, when, when you use it, when you know the information about the variable that is used to label each column, and then you're going to use the column percent cross tabulation to help you to make a business decision. So for instance, you're still my, uh, you're going to be my bank, okay? And I told you, I, for me, I just really, really love A-frame. If you, uh, let's say you are my personal financial planner, I told you, I will, I can move into a thing in the next two years, but I really want to buy a frame house there. Uh, how should I plan in my money? And they said, oh, oh, sorry. In this area, most a frame, 80% of them are relatively cheaper, less than $250,000. So uh, your advice based on this table will be, oh, you might need to save, but you don't need to, you just make sure you have uh, at least uh, you you can uh, if you want you have two hundred fifty thousand dollars you can find a, a lot of a frame in that area so you can based on that give give them a, a advice on how to save the money for this house so you can see in this situation you know this person had preference on a frame that's what I said you know the value of the variable that used uh, that is label your column and then you're gonna re, uh, refer to the column percentage cross correlation to help you to make a business decision. So that's why we have these two transformation of uh, based on cross tabulation because it really depends on in a business situation you're facing. You properly use the method, allow you to give the uh, the business decision properly and efficiently.